What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear coffee? Yes, I can already hear you all saying Starbucks. Coffee and Starbucks have a direct relationship with each other. In this video, you will learn how Starbucks defeated the odds to become a coffee empire. Keep watching the video to brew a better coffee. Not many of you know, but Starbucks was originally a roasted coffee bean shop only. Who knew a small shop would turn into a grand empire? The roasted coffee bean shop Starbucks was founded by three peers of the University of San Francisco, Jerry Baldwin, Zen Siegel, and Gordon Boker in 1971. They sold coffee beans, teas, and spices from around the world. The three pioneers were very keen on maintaining high-quality coffee beans. They made sure that the coffee beans were one of the finest. They sold coffee beans only for 10 years. This small coffee shop caught the eye of a local Howard Schultz. Howard hailed from a low-income family. His father was an army vet and truck driver, but soon they faced a financial crisis after his father hurt his leg and couldn't provide for them any longer. Sometimes he was so financially restrained that he had to sell his blood. He started his degree in communications, and after he graduated from college, he took up a job as a salesman at a ski lodge. However, Howard wished to work at Starbucks. He saw a lot of potential in this business. He was impressed by the company's ideology in helping people in the art of making coffee. It took Howard a year of convincing to get a job at Starbucks finally. He joined Starbucks as marketing director at half the salary he was being offered at another company. On his business visit to Milan, he got intrigued of the Italian coffee shops there. The coffee shops were like an emotion there. They knew their customers and even called them out by their names. This relationship deeply intrigued Howard, and he returned with new strategies for Starbucks. Moreover, the recipes for cappuccino and latte he brought back from his Milan trip tripled the sales of coffee beans at Starbucks. But the idea of an Italian cafe struck Howard the most. He said it to the company's owners, but they refused immediately. Howard resigned from Starbucks and embarked on his separate journey to build his coffee shop. As told by Howard, only those who go by unexplored roads, creating new industries and products, can build a strong, long-lasting company and inspire others to achieve great results. In April 1986, Howard borrowed money from a Starbucks owner. He took a loan from the bank to complete his 1.7 million investment for starting his coffee shop in Seattle by the name of I Journal. The coffee shop served coffee made of Starbucks coffee beans. In 1987, Howard found out that the owners of Starbucks were selling off their business due to needing more management abilities for such a large setup. He cashed the opportunity and bought the Starbucks factories and stalls with the help of more loans for $4 million. The burden the original owners tried to get rid of proved to be Howard's billionaire venture. He integrated the two companies to form Starbucks Corporation. On his second visit to Italy, Howard brought back footage of baristas in Italian coffee shops serving coffee. The footage helped revitalize and train their staff and customer service. He even got their coffee menu cards. By 1989, Starbucks had 55 stores already. Coffee was not a popular drink amongst Americans. Howard had to use carefully crafted marketing strategies to get Americans addicted to his coffee and integrate it into their lifestyles. Starbucks was continuously campaigning for coffee as romantic. The slogans and messages were easy to memorize, so the next time you are given the word, Starbucks always pops into your mind. He set rules for his coffee shops, as coffee was an elegant item. The grace of it lies in a set of rules, including no smoking, due to which all you could smell was freshly brewed coffee, nothing less. Within five years of acquiring Starbucks, Howard opened 125 stores across the USA. He began his global revolution in New England and extended to California within those years. And what adds to the surprise is that this coffee shop solely works on the principle of self-service, which could scare initial setup for people reluctance to get their beverages or food themselves. 
Still, Howard stood firm, and the customers willingly placed and collected their orders. In 1992, Starbucks published its first shares to be purchased for $17 per share, closing at $21.50 per share on the very first day. This shows the worth of Starbucks. By 1995, Starbucks already had 550 stores globally. There was a certain lag that was noticed in its sales that came in the summers. Coffee is a warm drink that was preferred in winter mostly. To overcome the sales gap, Starbucks introduced its chilled frappuccino, which boosted its sales and became the number one summer refreshing drink. In the years that followed, many coffee shops imitated the Starbucks concept. Still, nobody could beat Starbucks because the company remained firm on its most essential aspects, which include romance, luxury, peace, and a friendly ambience to enjoy the coffee. Did you know that Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, was one of the first investors of Starbucks. Only a man of wit and brilliance can assess another buried diamond. Starbucks' expansion had put financial strains on Howard. Between 2006 and 2009, Starbucks went through a severe drop in sales, and the concerned Howard knew they had to change their strategy. The Starbucks outlets were closed for a year for the staff to be retrained. Howard was awestruck with the concept of baristas making perfect signature coffees with their hands rather than automatic machines swirling and only creating noise. There was nothing fascinating about the devices. Howard narrated in a conference that he had to accommodate and train 100,000 staff members at the cost of $7 million. This received attention from the media as it was a risky step at this point in his career. He opened up Starbucks after one year of alterations and retraining. He announced that Starbucks is going back to its roots. This campaign worked, and Starbucks witnessed tremendous sales, with 143% growth in 2009. Is it only the coffee that's profiting and building the Starbucks empire? Actually, no. If we dig deep, we will realize that Starbucks follows a similar ideology to McDonald's different but similar. Every neighborhood where Starbucks is opened experienced a higher percentage of property growth than an average neighborhood where Starbucks is not. Starbucks has hired a team of strategists that help them identify the most profitable neighborhood. So the inflation in property prices seen after Starbucks's opening is just luck and a good lookout strategy and not the Starbucks effect. By 2020, Starbucks was reported to have 32,660 stores globally. The empire has yet to subside. We'd have to see more substantial growth and stores within the empire. That marks the end of the journey of a beverage shop that will never stop ruling the hearts of caffeine lovers. But the story of Starbucks is far from over. And there's so much more to uncover. So remember to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more game-changing content from Wealth Eagle. Trust us, you won't want to miss a beat. Until next time, stay curious and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible.